So in this video I'm going to show you how I scan and edit my negatives. Um, I don't use a traditional scanner, I do something called camera scanning, whereby you take a photo of the negative that's been lit up with a light source, and then convert that photo with a software called Negative Lab Pro, um, and then I will save that file as a TIFF, and I will do very minor tweaks to it in uh, Adobe Lightroom, just to kind of bring out the best of the image. So in this video I'm just going to show you my process from start to finish, uh, what equipment I use or what equipment you might need if you want to give it a go yourself. And then at the end we'll just have a look at a few photos just so you can kind of see what can be achieved from this process. So with it being called camera scanning, obviously you are going to require a camera. Um, I shoot with Fuji mirrorless cameras and I absolutely love them. Um, I went into it before in a previous video which I'll link above. Um, but yeah, I love my Fuji cameras and I use my Fuji X-T3 uh, for camera scanning along with the Fuji XF 60mm f2.4 macro lens. So yeah, so essentially if you're camera scanning you need a camera and you need uh, either a macro lens or a lens with a macro extension tube. You just need to be able to get super close to the negative and essentially you want to fill your entire frame with a photo of the negative so it's nice and close. Next up you need to be able to hold the camera perfectly still. Um, you don't want any camera shake or any blur or anything like that so you can either use a tripod um, or you can use a copy stand or something. I did have a copy stand um, but it was a cheap one I bought from eBay and it ended up breaking and I am going to buy a better one um, but I just thought you know what I'm not going to wait for that to do this video because I've used a tripod for months and months and I get perfectly acceptable results so it's just to kind of show you that you don't need to go out and spend a lot of money on lots of different things if you're a photographer hopefully you know you've already got a camera and you've already got a tripod so you're kind of halfway there so as well as holding the camera steady obviously you're going to need to hold the negative steady and you're going to need it to be as flat as possible um, there's plenty of viable options out there. When I first started I had a pretty ghetto setup that was like a cardboard box with a square cutout. Um, it wasn't great and it wasn't giving me <laughs> great photos but it worked at the time. Um, and then I stumbled onto this uh, 3D printable uh, negative holder. So basically you can download the file or send it to a local 3D printers um, and they'll print it off for you. I think they only charge me 30, 35 pounds. Um, and I managed to get a 35 holder and a 120 holder out of that. I went for dark blue instead of black because it was cheaper and it didn't seem to affect the quality of the photos. I'll put a, um, a link in the description actually if you want to check it out for yourself. But yeah, that's a cheap viable option that was giving me um, decent photos. But the uh, 120 holder actually only does 6x4, 5 or 6x6. So once I started shooting 6, 7 I needed something better. And that's when I stumbled across this, the Essential Film Holder, this is called by a guy named Andrew Clifton. Uh, he invented it himself quite recently, I believe, um, and it's been a great solution for me. I've really enjoyed using it. You know, you've got, uh, it holds it steady, nice and flat. Um, you're easily able to slip and slide the, the 120 film into it, and I think it does, obviously, 645, 6x6, 6x7, 6x9, um, and you can get an adapter for 35 film for it as well, 35 millimeter. So yeah, it's been really good. I've only had it a few weeks now, but I'm really enjoying using it and it's making my process a lot easier. You can also have an option to um, have the borders showing if you're one of them photographers that like to show your borders, or he's just released a, a new part where you can close the borders off and just have the, the negative instead of the borders as well. So yeah, really great option. And I think it only cost me sort of like between 70, 80 pounds. And I think they only go up to 90, depending on what kind of set you want and stuff like that so it's cheap compared to some of the stuff out there and I'm getting really great results out of it so yeah chuffed, chuffed a bit with that thanks Andrew for making this so you're also going to need a light source to backlight the negative um, when you're taking a photo of it I used to just use my iPad Pro I had an app called Lightbox on it where it just essentially just gives you a nice white screen um, but since then I invested in a uh, it's called a Kaiser Slim Light Plano these are they're really good um, LED panels where you get a pure sort of white light source and it's really good for, for camera scanning. I've just um, masked off with gaffer tape parts of the light I don't need so I don't have any sort of extra light bleeding over and the bit that I've left is perfect for the essential film holder so it just kind of goes on there perfectly. 
And then I've just got a bunch of these random things uh, for cleaning the negatives, so like an air blower, and a brush and stuff like that. I don't know what half this stuff does. Usually I just use the air blower to, to blow any dust off the negative before I take a photo of it. So once I've got all my equipment ready, I'll, uh, I'll start by setting up my tripod, be that on the floor or usually I actually set it up on the table just so I don't have to crouch down or bend over. Um, and then I'll put my camera on the tripod and I'll face it directly down towards the ground. An easy way to then try and get it level and straight is to put a mirror underneath it and you just want to look through through your viewfinder or the back of the screen and get it to a point where you can see the reflection of your lens pointing directly back up to you so you know it's straight down. And then I'll usually finish that off by uh, using my iPhone, it's got a level uh, app on it. So I'll put that on top of the camera and just get it to a point where it says zero degrees so I know that it's as level as I can get it anyway. Um, then I want to set my camera settings, so ISO you want as low as possible, mine's 160 on the Fuji but most cameras it's about 100 just because you don't want any noise uh, in the image. Then I set my aperture to f8, um, a lot of people who do camera scanning say that that's kind of the sweet spot because obviously you want to get the whole thing in focus but you still want to let in uh, a decent amount of light. And then shutter speed I do uh, 1 8th of a second. It kind of depends on your camera, where's the sweet spot, but you just want to look at your histogram if you can and make sure that you're not blowing out any highlights but you're still getting a, a decent image. Then after that I'll then set the, uh, the LED lights directly underneath the camera and then I'll put my film holder on top of the LED light. Now usually you want to leave a little bit of space between the light and your film just so um, you've got a little bit of diffusion. The essential film holder I'm using obviously has that built in, it's got a, a layer of diffusion so I can just put that directly on top. But if you've got something, just try not to lay it directly flat onto the LED light because you need a, a little bit of a gap. So when it's all set up, it's time to put the film into the film holder. Um, I usually uh, will develop sort of one or two at the same time. I try not to build up a backlog of films. If I've got two ready to do, I will develop them and scan them just so you know I don't have this massive backlog of film that needs developing and scanning. Uh, I'll leave it whole, I won't cut it before I scan it, so you can just pop it in, take a picture, move to the next one, take a picture, move to the next one. Usually I do this in complete darkness and I would advise doing it in complete darkness for best results. So I usually do it at night time, I shut the curtains to avoid any street light coming in, I turn off all the lights and essentially you want the only light in the room to be the light coming from the LED light panel. So I'll then set my camera to uh, self timer mode, obviously you want to be able to reduce any possible camera shake or any blur like that so it's best to have it on a self timer so you're not moving the camera when you're taking the pictures. My camera does 2 seconds or 10 seconds, I find 2 seconds to be ample and then once you're all set up it's actually relatively easy to quickly work through the images, just take a picture, next one take a picture, next one take a picture and it's very very simple to get through them all, just make sure that you're constantly making sure there's no light leaking through and the images are nice and straight but it's, it's very very simple. So then once I've done uh, and I've taken pictures of all the negatives, what I'll do is I'll, I'll load my memory card into my computer and I will load all the pictures of the negatives directly into Lightroom um, and then obviously I'll convert them with Negative Lab Pro. So what I'll do now is I'll do a screen recording of my uh, Lightroom and I'll show you me converting a few negatives and then I'll show you how I would then edit them after they've been converted. Okay, so yeah, I'm just in Lightroom. I've just got two images that I'm gonna quickly um, edit through and just show you what I do with them. So a picture of a model from a recent shoot, uh, Mora, and just a picture of a boat I took with my Mamiya C330. So uh, first of all, if you're using Negative Lab Pro and you can convert using that plugin, the first thing you need to do is just do a white balance off of the border, um, just to get the correct white balance for the negative and then uh, use Control N to bring up Negative Lab Pro. Now initially from the get-go you've got uh, obviously your source, whether you're using a scan or a digital camera, I'm using a digital camera. Then you've got your color model, which is basically, they've got their basic sort of settings, or then you've got some based on different scanners, so front uh, Frontier and Naritsu are two different scanners that give slight different looks. Um, I used to prefer Frontier, but I'm much preferring the sort of softer look of the Naritsu scanner recently, uh, so I tend to use that more than anything. Pre-saturation is how much saturation it's going to get from the get-go. I try to keep it quite low because I can always add it, but you, it's harder to take it away. So I keep that on two. And then border buffer, I keep on zero. Now, 
if you are gonna keep the buff the border in um, I usually go to like something like five percent and then I'll convert it that way um, and then it gives you sort of slightly better colors if you're keeping the film border in or the other way to do it which I tend to do uh, more than not is actually I will crop it in first so after you've done the white balance crop it into the image then convert it so the border buffer is zero because there's no uh, border on there then I'll convert it that way um, and then if you want to show the border um, you could just crop back out again so once you've applied your changes come to the image crop back out a little bit and that way you can show the border uh, but I don't want the border for this image so I'll get rid of it uh, open back negative lab pro so <coughs> working our way down from the top uh, initially you've got your tone curve here they've added this little cycle through but if you have a little look through you've got all your different tone curves highlight hard shadow hard linear the different linear options and the standard so if you look at standard here I, to me that's quite contrasty um, things like all hard like this it's way too much so I prefer to keep it quite linear um, just so I can it's a basic scan and I can do the edits myself but I do find just linear to be a little bit too flat. I quite like to just go for linear deep because it gives that little bit more sort of oomph to the shadows and stuff. And I use that as a starting point and I'll work from there. So then I literally just work my way down. Usually I find that I'll up the contrast like a tiny bit, uh, maybe bring up the brightness if need be, but that image was exposed quite well. Lights, darks, whites and blacks, you can, um, it's the same as what you'll get in the basic panel uh, in Lightroom and you can go through them. I tend to just leave them with a negative Lab Pro and then if I need to change my highlights and stuff, I'll do that on the um, TIFF file that I'm going to create from this. White balance as well, so I know with the update obviously you can work on your mid-tones and your highs and your shadows. If I think it needs you know, some more magenta or more yellow in the mid-tones, I might work on it in here. But when it comes to actual white balance, I know they've got all these options for different white balances and different film stocks. I tend to just leave it on neutral and um, I'll work on the TIFF file instead. So once I'm happy with everything, um, I set my <coughs> sharpen settings to lab. I'll leave it like that. I'll click make copy and add to subfolder. Uh, and that's a TIFF file, one not a JPEG. So I'll click apply. And then once done, it will pop, uh, populate down here with another file, which is your TIFF file. So then if I want to come in and again, maybe you know add a tiny bit more contrast or brightness, or if I think the highlights need to come down, I will work on it in, uh, in Lightroom, just because I'm more comfortable with Lightroom and editing the TIFF file and stuff. But to be honest with you, I tend to usually not do a great deal to them because I try and keep them as close as I can to the original scans. Usually I may add a, a little bit of dehaze just to help it punch. I don't usually mess with, uh, mess with texture and clarity and stuff like that just because that will affect the grain. If I do want to slightly sharpen it, I'll just go down to sharpen and I'll never go sort of above 20, maybe sort of 15, 20 just to give it a little bit of sharpen. I do have these uh, film tweak uh, presets I've saved, like one for black and white, one for color, uh, two for color, one for the frontier scanner, one for the Naritsu. Um, they're just where I've made tweaks in the past um, so it's like a shortcut for me so if you see that's original and if I go click on there so that's kind of where I would usually edit it maybe a bit too much uh, brightness on that one but somewhere around there so not too many changes but as you can see sort of just enough to make it pop that little bit more um, but yeah super happy with that and then uh, I'll do one more for you quickly. So I've got this picture of a boat uh, that I took with my Mamiya C330. So I did a white balance. That was pretty close already. And then click, uh, I'll crop it in actually on this one. The horizon looks off to me. So I'll actually straighten that up as well. And then I'll click Control uh, N. Same settings, there's no border, so that's 0% and then convert. So 
So again, I mean, from the get-go, I'm pretty happy with that. I I always just tend to add a little bit more contrast. Um, I don't think the exposure needs to be touched. I won't touch the light darks, whites and blacks because I'll do that with a TIFF file again. Uh, in terms of color, mm, maybe a bit more yellow. No, maybe down a bit actually. I think that needs to come down because it was a sunset. Uh, bit more cyan. No, leave that as it is. Um, sharpen lab, make copy, add subfolder, apply. So this will give me my TIFF file and I, I do just prefer, just because I know Adobe Lightroom a lot better, I prefer to just create my TIFF file and then I can work from that. So for me, I want to get that boat centered. So I might come up a little bit more, crop it in just so that boat's sort of in the middle of there. Uh, if I go to my film tweak preset, Naritsu would give me that. And all that's done is just saved some changes I've done before. So contrast up a little bit, exposure up a little bit, highlights down, shadows up, whites up, blacks down. It's quite a normal thing to do. <coughs> um, I've added some texture rather than clarity just because that will help add texture to things like the edges of the boat and the edge of the landscape and stuff. Dehaze 10% and that you'll probably find that the sharpening is, well 30 on that one, I'd take it down to 20. So it's changed from that to that. So yeah, just mild tweaks, but enough to kind of give that image a little bit more pop. So that's how I do it. Um, I'm not saying it's the right way, and it's certainly not the only way, but it's working for me at the moment, and I'm happy with the results that I'm getting. And if further down the line, I do change my workflow in a way where I start getting better results, I'll be sure to let you guys know what I'm doing differently. I mean, there's plenty of film photographers out there that actually think that editing the negatives in any way, shape or form is wrong or cheating or blah, blah, blah. But personally, I think that's bullshit. I think if I want to edit a negative to help it just kind of be the best it possibly can be, that's my prerogative and that's what I'm gonna do. But I do, I just, I think the whole, the whole process from developing to scanning yourself is so simple when you get your head around it. And I actually find the whole thing, you know, enjoyable from start to finish. So if you're kind of on the fence about thinking, giving it a go, then I'd highly recommend, you know, trying it. And I hope that this video has been of some help to you. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video. I've got some more ones coming up. I'm going to rent the Pentax 6.7 uh, next week, hopefully, and do a few videos with that. And then, fingers crossed, I'm off to Tenerife the week after that, um, if everything goes according to plan. And I'm hoping to shoot some film out there and do a few videos for that too. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully see you soon.